Okay, good. So, welcome back everyone. Welcome YouTube friends. So, let's start today by just, I, I want to I throw out a couple of questions to you. Um, and as always, these are not trick questions. These are not metaphysical questions. They are the, as simple and straightforward as they sound. Okay, and the first question, I'm going to put you all on Hollywood Square's view so I can see you responding. Uh, first question is, are you aware? Are you aware? Okay, okay. Now, don't think, right? In res these questions are not cues for you to think because there's no end to that. These, these questions are cues for you to notice, to notice. Okay, notice your experience. It's, there's nothing more direct. For instance, let me back up one. Um, uh, is is is? Uh, can you hear the sound of a trumpet right now? No. Okay. So you see what you did just then. You didn't stop to think about it. You stopped to notice. That simple. Okay. Um, is there a is there a buzzing sensation in your left kneecap? No? Okay. Some people might have a yes, fine. Whatever you, but again, the point is you're noticing, you're not thinking. Okay, next question. Are you aware? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, next question. This awareness, then, this awareness, which, which you're noticing, um, what color is it? Does it have a color? Doesn't have a color. Okay. Uh, what size is it? Does it have a size? Yeah. Keep noticing. Keep noticing. Um, uh, what shape is it? Yeah. Not triangular. Not right. Not nothing. Is it high in pitch or low in pitch? No. Okay. Does it feel like anything? Is it tangible? No. No. Diane, you look dubious on that one. You. 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 No. Okay. Good. Okay, just checking. No, because I want to be, I, I don't want anyone to feel railroaded. I want to make sure that this is your, your actual experience that, that we're confirming. So we're aware. Are you, oh, are you still aware? You're aware now. Are you aware now? How about now? Okay, good, just checking. Has the awareness taken on a color or shape or size since... Last time we checked, no. Um, does this awareness have a gender? Is it male or female? Does it, is it a Capricorn or a Gemini? <laughs> right? Is it, is, is it American or, or French or Russian? Is it, is it, uh, uh, is it black or white? Or brown. So it's 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 pretty nothing. Is it pretty nothing? And yet it keeps being here. Every time we look, here it is. Okay. So can we just rest in this awareness? Does this? Oh wait, let me ask you another question. Does the presence of this awareness every time we notice? Here it is. We're aware. Does the presence of this awareness depend on the absence of anything else? Do you need for all the colors, all the sh colors and shapes in the room, do all the objects in the room to go away to be aware? No. Does it depend on uh, certain sounds being present or on silence being present? No. No. We're starting to feel pretty confident that this awareness can coexist with anything else we might be aware of. Do you have to stop thinking to have this awareness? No. You're thinking, you're processing these questions, and yet this silent, shapeless, colorless, touchless, etc., color, odorless, tasteless awareness is present. 
It doesn't depend on, its presence doesn't depend on the absence of anything else. It's there along with everything else. Can you notice that you're already resting in it? Can you notice that you're already resting in this presence? In this, this, this awareness? Let me put it this way. Is there anything you have to do for this awareness to be present? Every time you look, there it is. So if we don't have to do anything for it to be there, can we just rest in the situation of it being there? Can we just rest in this awareness? Rest in this colorless, shapeless, everythingless awareness that gets along with everything else. Just rest in this situation. You notice it doesn't matter what you do with your eyes. Whether your eyes are in this direction, this direction. You may have noticed that your eyes are not... T have, when we start to, to do this, the eyes may be not particularly um, focused on one thing or another thing, right? They're just... Because they're resting. Everything's starting to rest. We're not looking for anything. We're not listening for anything. Whatever we happen to see, hear, feel is there. Whatever thoughts or emotions come and go, they're coming and going, but we're not engaging with them. They're just there. Coexisting perfectly with this awareness. So we're just resting in it. Maybe we'll close our eyes while we're resting in it. But we're not, but just be clear, we're not starting to do anything. We're just, we're already resting in this awareness. And now let's do it. We'll just change the position of the eyelids. Close the eyes. Don't meditate. Whatever you do, don't meditate. Don't commence anything. Don't change anything. We're already aware. Awareness is already perfectly devoid of all characteristics. Awareness is already perfectly coexistent with all the experiences that have characteristics. We're already resting in that situation. So we can just remain as we are.
Are you aware? Is there any effort required for this awareness to be present? No, none of that's changed. Does the presence of this awareness continue to exist, to coexist perfectly and frictionlessly with all the sounds and thoughts and everything else we're aware of? Yep. Is there anything we could do to fundamentally change this situation? Nothing I can see. So we may as well just completely give in to it. Rest utterly in the situation as it is. The dogs bark, the horns honk, the planes fly overhead, all just things we're aware of. And everything that we're aware of is a reminder that we're aware. Thank you so much. Like little alarm clocks reminding us, what time is it? Oh. It's the time that we're aware, a.k.a. now, a.k.a. always. So thank you, barking dogs. Thank you, everything.
sometimes you might feel, oh, geez, I wandered off on this long story, this long train of thoughts. I forgot I was resting in awareness. Or you may just think, oh, I wandered off, my, I went off somewhere. But where did you go? Did all that happen outside of awareness? No, there were just some thoughts you were aware of, and you got kind of um, deeply engaged with them. So when you realize that, you just, okay, am I aware? And that's it. Before you realize that, can't do anything. So don't worry about it. Before you realize you've been caught up, you can't do anything about it because you're caught up. You don't realize it. Don't worry about it. Am I aware? Yeah. Where is that? Right here. Always right here. Never anywhere else you have to go. Never anything else you have to do. Just allow yourself <sighs> to completely give up to that awareness, to this presence, this here-ness, this I-ness. To completely melt into where you already are, where you always already are. Completely melt into it. This awareness, which has no size or shape or color or sound or texture, does it have any edges? Any boundaries? Hmm, no, so it's boundless. Boundless awareness. Boundless doesn't mean big, it has no size. Just means boundless, no edges. No top or bottom. No inside or outside. No nothing. and nothing to do but utterly melt into this, where we already always are.
Are you aware? Yeah. Rest in that. Rest as that. And keep the eyes closed. And take a few minutes to gently bring the body back to a more active state. Stretching, twisting, wiggling, whatever the body wants you to do to wake it up again. And when you feel ready, slowly open the eyes. Okay, how's everyone doing? Everybody good? Good. Any questions? Oh, let me set it so you can unmute yourselves. Okay. Any questions or observations? I had a question for you. Who am I hearing? Here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Go ahead, please. Uh, I don't know how mu how much answer there is, but it's something I kept thinking to myself during mm -hmm. this. If this I don't, ha it, Ricky, if I don't have an answer, I'll make one up. When when you made the uh, aside comment to to Dr. Trudeau, well, yeah, you know, don't don't do this while you're driving. So yeah. as I understand it, we we meditate in order to. Um, 
live, well, there's a um, physiological response that calms the nervous system and everything during the meditation session. So we get a mm -hmm. bit of a visual effect throughout the rest of our day. Mm -hmm. So it just helps us. It just calms mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. But then uh, spiritually, we um, are able to bring a more fully present awareness into our, our daily life. And so the question is, besides closing your eyes, what is it about meditation that's different from being fully present in the rest of our day? What else when we're driving or something that requires our attention, is there a difference? And I, I'm gonna make the assumption that someone like a Tibetan monk could meditate and drive because they're an expert, right? They've dedicated years of their life to that. So I'm not trying to make trip you up and make a trick question because the first thing you said was don't meditate. Right. But I am trying to articulate what it is that's the difference between meditating and living our daily life if, if we were well practiced, fully aware of it. Right, right, right. Uh, first of all, never worry about tripping me up, okay? Al always try to trip me up, okay? <laughs> Uh, you know, this is stump, stump. We're always playing stump the teacher here, right? Get, bring, bring me your, bring me your, always bring me your, your, your real questions. Always bring me the, the, the don't just lob softballs at me. Uh, no, and it's a great question, Rick. It, 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 I mean, in a way, this is the question. In a way, this is the question. What's the difference between so-called meditation and so-called life. Um, and you're absolutely right that ultimately there, there is no difference. That's the point of all of this. That's why we're practicing. We're practicing meditation to, um, to make it obsolete. It's a provisional thing. It's a provisional thing. It's a thing for remembering what we are. It's a thing for noticing that, oh, I'm boundless awareness. I'm boundless presence with no size, no shape, no color, no beginning, no end, no nothing, and therefore, incidentally, no problems. Okay? So, so, so what I am is, and what life is, is infinite okayness, infinite problem-free okayness. What I like to call, ah, okay, uh, goes by other names like nirvana, satori, and so, and so forth, grace. Um, we shouldn't have to do anything. If we're truly the ocean, if it's truly just some confusion that we're a wave and what we really are is the ocean we should we should be able to walk around not just being the ocean all the time which we are but consciously being the ocean all the time and you're absolutely right um so what's what's the difference why did i tell whoever that was i forget okay don't don't meditate while you're driving um, because provisionally it seems as if there's a difference. For most of us, for now, it seems like there's a difference. Okay, it see, and and when you when you get to the place where there is no difference, uh, or 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 where you've seen through the illusion that there's a difference then then you don't need me to tell you okay now meditate now don't meditate okay um in the meantime it feels like there's a difference and so we and that's appropriate that's appropriate you know why do you bother to take an hour and a half out of your 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 busy week and tune in here on thursday or whatever this is to do this because oh it feels like there's a difference we sit we close our eyes we ring a bell whatever and ah oh, there's this delicious settling down sometimes clearer sometimes less clear but in general there's something delicious about it that we don't fully experience the other 
23 and a half hours of the day. Excuse me, I just knocked over my coffee. I got to do something about this in my problem free life. Hang on a sec. See, stuff happens. But I saved most of it. So, um, a useful way to talk about this, and of course, you know, in the traditional teachings, this is all there. This has all been been hashed through. Um, there are two terms that that are give us a very useful way of 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 approaching this really vital issue, this crucial issue. Uh, and some of you may be familiar with these terms. In in Sanskrit, it's shamatha and vipassana. Shamatha and vipassana. Um, and uh, There, um, if, if, if some of you, I think, may have studied with Tibetan teachers, and then you may know the, uh, these, the Tibetan equivalent of the terms, which is Shine and Lachtong. Shine and Lachtong. Uh, by the way, you can always tell the Sanskrit, because the Sanskrit is, is always these long, polysyllabic, flowery, mellifluous words with a lot of A's in them. And then the, and then the, the, uh, the Tibetan is, it never has more than two syllables and it's much more kind of, <clears throat> more kind of Anglo-Saxon sounding. The, the, the Sanskrit sounds more like Italian or something. So, shamatha and vipassana or shine lakhtong. Um, and you see them translated a lot of different ways in English. Okay. Um, commonly, you see them translated as tranquility and insight. Okay. Tranquility and insight. Not perfect translations, but there are worse ones. Sometimes you'll see Vipassana translated as concentration, which is awful, terrible. Okay. Um, my stab at, con at, at translating them is Vipassana settling. Um, I'm sorry, shamatha settling, Vipassana seeing. Settling, seeing. Okay? So these are the two elements of meditation. For most people in the West in 2020, um, the emphasis is on the first, is on settling. Uh, it just got so settled. It was so nice, so relaxing. Uh, and you're right. It's, 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 it's great. Um, that, it, that is an aspect of it. And that is where we tend to feel the contrast. I don't feel so settled when I'm running around during the day. And now, ah, oh, it's just so, so blissful. To, to let go of all that busyness and just just settle into some some silence but in a way as you continue to practice in the framework of what we're doing here which is non-dual practice I'll come back to that word because this is important in the framework of non-dual practice the more you practice, the, the deeper, the clearer you get on all this stuff. Actually, the less important the, uh, the shamatha is, the less important the settling down and feeling tranquil is, the more important the seeing is, the, the vision, the clear insight into what's what. Now, when we say insight, this can sound initially like, oh, it means some intellectual knowing, but it's, it's not. It's seeing what's what. It's like um, you know when you see 
that this tiger you were so terrified of, oh, it's, made, it's a paper tiger, right? You don't have to go around and think and do a bunch of logic and, and philosophy to get to, therefore, the tiger is made out of paper. You just see it clearly, and then, interestingly enough, you become more relaxed. So shamatha and Vipassana work together. They're not two separate things. They're two aspects of, of this one thing, which is meditation or awakening, really. Shamatha, the settling, we could say it's like, okay, we've been tossed here for all our lives, tossed in, among the waves on the surface of life. This wave, this wave. There's one wave I, I identify as this is the Dean wave. There's another wave over there. That's the, the Rick wave. There's the microphone wave. And the, you know, it's just a world of waves, separate, separate objects, and all with different agendas and different things. Ow, I knocked my head against the microphone. Ooch, I, I spilled my coffee, right? All the thrills and spills of life in, in the relative. Sometimes things we think of as desirable, sometimes... You spill your coffee, it's highly undesirable. But it's just stuff going on, all the waves interacting. And, and it's like, what's next? What's next? We, we tend to have, feel like we have to be vigilant all the time to optimize things, to try to have the good stuff happen and avoid the bad stuff. Then we go, okay, time to meditate. Ring a bell, sit, cross your legs, close your eyes, whatever your procedure is. Maybe you use an object of meditation, you use a mantra or something. Maybe you don't use an object. You just somehow you settle into the subject, into the experiencer, and it's settling. So it's so we're settling below the surface of life, where all those waves are settling into the ocean. And we go, ooh, it's nice and quiet here. We did not create the silence. We're not, create, we're not generating tranquility. That's, that's a contradiction in terms, because to generate something, you have to work. We're settling into what's already always there, but went unnoticed because our attention was caught up in all the stuff on the surface. So shamatha, uh, yeah, shamatha, shine, settling, delicious. As we continue to practice the settling, that feeds the seeing. Shamatha feeds the Vipassana. Then we start to notice, oh, this ocean is here. This ocean not only is here, but oh, is there a place where my little wave leaves off and the ocean begins? No, the, the more I look for it, the more I can't find any dividing line. And then as, as my insight sharpens further, I start to notice, and all the other little waves have no place where they're s divided from the ocean either. So the non-dual nature of life starts revealing itself more and more. That I am that with a capital T that ocean of beingness, that ocean of, of boundless awareness with no characteristics. I am that, you are that, all this is nothing but that, that alone is. And that is the situation whether or not I happen to feel settled down at the moment. This is the key thing. Okay, are you hearing that? Is, is everyone hearing that? This is, this, this is the point I've been inching my way up to for the last 10 minutes here. This is the key thing, that the non-dual nature, the, 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 the non-separateness of life, the non-separateness of existence, the, the, the f basic fact of life, which is that we're not just little, I'm not a little ego zipped into a bag of skin r running around interacting with, with other bunch of little separate entities. But there's just the you know, separate, bounded, mortal entities, but there's just this one thing which does not have beginning and end, male and female, birth and death. This, this is the, what is ultimately perceived by Vipassana, by Lachtung, 
It's all, it, there's only ocean. There's only ocean. In the beginning, right, earlier in our career of awakening, getting settled down is crucial to being able to perceive that. More and more as we go along, it's just, oh, obviously, <laughs> it's just obvious. How did I ever think I was a wave? Now, we continue to behave as waves. This doesn't mean that we just, you know, in terms of the way we live our life, it's just like, oh, we melted into cosmic pablum, you know. Uh, who are we going to send to the, to, to, the, to, to, you know, Gelson's or Whole Foods to pick up the groceries? Well, don't send Ricky. Ricky got enlightened and now he's useless. He's just, he can't tell the difference between his hands and the steering wheel. No, that's not the way it happens. Um, we, 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 we continue to have the functioning of, of the apparent functioning of this wave, the hand wave, you know, interacting with the steering wheel wave, but it's just along, that is all within the context of perceiving that all those waves are the same one ocean. And that that is the true nature of all of it, and that's what dominates our awareness. That's, that becomes, that which was always somewhere in the background getting lost has become the foreground. So, so the quality of our life becomes this problem-free nature. The, the nature of this boundless being, this, this boundless awareness, because it has no beginning, no end, no top, no bottom, no inside, no outside, no nothing, and therefore no problems. That, ah, that infinite okayness. That's what's going on all the time. And everything else is just like details, like textures, like manifestations of, the, the, of, of this infinite okayness. Okay. So when we, you ask a question like, like your question, Rick, which is, you know, why not be meditating while we're driving? See, it's... it's um, we can't answer that in absolute terms. It's relative to practice, to where is this person in their development, in their awakening. And, and your, your intuition is absolutely right. I, I want to I take exception to one thing in the way that you pose the question. You said, well, some Tibetan monk is going to be the expert, so he can do it. Um, I would suggest don't, don't think that way, right? The, because see that's our tendency to exoticize this whole thing, to go oh well that's that's a person with brown skin who wears a robe and so therefore you know, that's bullshit, right? He's got expertise. How is your expertise going to become more than what we were just doing, which was noticing that that we're aware and 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 resting in it and giving up all pretense of doing anything else. See, even, even to say, oh, he's going to be an expert. There's good. That, see, that fosters, the, and, and it's so deeply ingrained. You see, it, it, it crops up in these sneaky ways. That's fostering this idea that, oh, there is something more for me to do. I'm not quite, if I could just, there's some subtle strategy here. And it's very important to see those things and let them go. This, this comes under the rubric of one, one of my very favorite quotes that's becoming more and more meaningful to me as I go along from Sri Nisargadatta Maharaj, where he said, don't try to understand. It's enough that you don't misunderstand. Right? Don't try to understand. We're not going to construct awakening out of, oh, when I finally understand, get all this philosophy, put it all together, bing, then I'm going to get it. No, that's not how it works. It's more like uh, it's not like building this big edifice. It's more like taking the, the wrecking ball and knocking down all these misunderstandings that we have. And the big misunderstanding is that there is something between me, this one who's seeking a, a, awakening, and that awakening, that there's anything between me and it. That's the dualism. Okay, are you, are you hearing this? Is this, is this resonating? Anything? Yeah, Ricky. What? Uh, yeah, no, I I hear you a lot. It, it brings up a second question for me. Mm -hmm. Good. If we 
if we don't try to create a, a space or a distance between ourselves as lay people or Westerners or mm -hmm. beginner meditators, mm -hmm. but people that are in contact with Buddhism or meditative techniques, like if, is it just a matter of time? Like if there, were, if there were no Dharma Sangha, you know, if there was none of that, does it mean that eventually a person could come to enlightenment without any of that? Would they have to like, given enough time, would everyone become a Buddha on their own because it is the ultimate truth and so we would eventually come to it? That's my sense of it. I, you know, I, we, I haven't had an opportunity to run a controlled experiment and create a universe and, and, and wait for eons and see if, if all the sentient beings eventually wake up. My sense of it is that there's an, 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 there is an inevitability to it. Mm -hmm. You know, because it, it just seems to me that walking around not noticing what we are, there's something fundamentally untenable about it. You know, to me, the miracle is not that, you know, occasionally someone gets awakened. The miracle is that all these people persist in walking around and staying asleep. Do you know what I mean? You get, and that becomes more and more that way as you start, you know, incrementally. And for most of us, it's a gradual incremental thing. It's not just like, like an apple falls on your head one day. Uh, as you become more incrementally more awake, and because it's not adding some new experience, what it is is, see, and this is where it becomes more and more a matter of, uh, in a sense, this is where it becomes more and more a matter of of uh, vipassana rather than, than shamatha. It's not like we have to add some new, even this deep tranquility behind everything, but it's that we, we just get more awake to seeing that this is what we've been all along. And then we, we, we can't understand how everyone's missing it. Almost everyone is missing it. And there's records of this in the scriptures. You know, there's that great thing in, in the, the gospel uh, according to Thomas, where Jesus says the the kingdom of God is spread upon the earth, but people don't see it. You know, you can almost see Jesus smacking his forehead. How are they missing it? It's spread upon the earth. It's all, there's nowhere you can go that it isn't, but people don't see it. How do they miss it? You know, and in fact, you can read the whole drama of the gospels in that in that light. You know, Jesus goes around going, hey, the kingdom of God is at hand. You know, everyone, right? That's the quote. He says it over and over. Everyone thinks, oh, the kingdom of God is something that's going to come later. It's going to be some political event that some Messiah is going to come on a white horse. It was, was largely the traditional Jewish understanding at the time. You know, the disciples keep not getting it. The disciples keep saying, when's, hey, Jesus, when's the kingdom of God going to come? Is it going to come on Wednesday? Is it going to come on Thursday? When the kingdom of God comes, can I be the one sitting at your right hand and all that? And he keeps going, oh, no, 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 no. Don't, don't you, how many times do I have to tell you? The kingdom of God is within you, and the kingdom of God is at hand. It's at hand, it's right now, and it's within you, and it's spread upon the earth. You look inside, look outside, it's always right now. How are you guys not seeing it? Don't you see it? And they go, no, we don't see it. You're really annoying, hold still while we knock these nails into you. <laughs> you know? Um, it, it's quite a drama. Um, so, um, so this is working for you, Ricky? Yeah, thank you. It, it was, gives me more to think about. Yeah. Oh, 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 this is, yeah, I knew there was something, I, a thread I wanted to pick up there. Yeah, your question about would everyone get there sooner or later? Um, if they were not the, the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha. I think so. I, I mean, to me, it's like, sometimes I have this picture in my head of, it's like this big swimming pool surrounded by banana peels. And we're all just dancing on the banana peels. 
the the fact that we haven't all slipped into the pool by now is is that's what's amazing not that someone falls in once in a while but how long do you want to wait i don't want to wait i don't want to wait i'm i'm tired of suffering i don't like suffering um so 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 we have this blessing in, in buddhist terms the buddha the dharma the sangha right in whatever whatever terms whatever works for you you know it's um we we have we have the 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 fact of enlightenment the fact of awakening the 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 existential fact the ontological fact of what we are that that we are the ocean that's the buddha right the buddha was not a guy 25 all it also is a guy 2500 years ago who 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 thank god expressed this with such incredible clarity right um then the dharma what was expressed here here it, all this talk that we do this is the dharma and then the sangha all our wonderful wonderful friends here occupying all the hollywood squares here just in, in engaged in this project with us and keeping us inspired and we keep coming back week after week and seeing the seeing that spark in each other's eyes that tells us oh there it is the awakening is happening i wasn't crazy i was i'm not the only one you know it's all it's all it's, there's nothing more precious but it's that's a different thing from saying oh this guy's a tibetan this guy's wearing a robe this guy's been doing a bunch of techniques therefore he or she is more awake than i am that's bullshit and i'm i'm deliberately using strong language because that thing is is keeps us it's one of the many ways it's one of the many misunderstandings in shri nisargadatta's phrase that keep us from noticing our own innate awakeness and also then become subject to all kinds of abuse and manipulation you know at the worst not only in the buddhist tradition but in every tradition every tradition is got oh i'm the special person in the robes so i get to i get to diddle the altar boys you know or whatever their version of it is and believe me it goes on in the buddhist world goes on as as i think you know it goes on in 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 every one of them so this adulation of of people who are you know oh they're from the east or they're from i remember once some some i was leading a retreat in louisiana and someone asked a question we were talking about awakeness and you know enlightenment and they said well in places like india where everyone's naturally enlightened I went, what <laughs> um no no i've been to india and believe me no <laughs> um yeah someone someone else had a hand up i i i, I kind of want to stay in this yeah larry please unmute your unmute yourself okay yes <clears throat> so you know i have to be honest and say that although there's some part of me that loves this idea that there is this eternal thing that we're all subsequently coming from mm -hmm. um not nonetheless um mm -hmm. i think i'm a bag of skin i think i'm a, a consciousness in a bag of skin mm -hmm. you know in other words um i don't i don't uh, i don't see um i don't have enough of passion right. yet to to see what you are describing Right. and i've read i've read about it over and over again and i've heard people talk to it in the most talk about it in the most beautiful ways it, it's mm -hmm. the ultimate answer to the fear of death it's the greatest thing since sliced bread yep but i don't see it and, right and <laughs> right and so um uh okay you know, okay who who doesn't see it I don't see it. Yeah, and and what do you mean by I? 
my personal thinking. So your thinking. My thinking not, doesn't not, see it. I don't experience yeah, it. Yes, your, think, your thinking will never see it. Thinking can't see anything. Thinking can only think. So, right. so, so abandon all hope of, of, <laughs> of, grasp, uh, of grasping it, it with your thoughts. Okay, what else you got? When, when, <laughs> if you discard that tool, because that's the wrong tool for the job. You know, if you're, if, you're trying to bang, if you're trying to unscrew a screw with a hammer, doesn't matter how hard you hammer, that's not going to work. And that's what you're doing by trying to do it with the intellect. And everyone does that, by the way. So, what do you, so, when, so let's throw away the hammer. Now what do you got? Well, uh, so as, as a uh, physician scientist, I would say you threw away my left brain, I still have my right brain. Okay. And what can you Which, do with that? Well, it feels stuff. It has a sense of, of feeling. It has a sense of good. It has a, it has a feeling nature. Good. Now you're talking. Now you're talking. <laughs> and, and, and just by the way, that, that whole model of left brain, right brain is something that only your left brain can think in those terms. <laughs> of course. <laughs> good. Good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so right. So when you so, but what we're calling for them for convenience sake for the moment, right brain, d it more direct apprehension, Experience. feeling, yes. feeling apprehension. Uh, um, stay. So step one, stay with that. Okay. Um, step two, come back to this question again. See, whenever people say. And this happens all the time, and I, I do it too. But I don't expect. Oh, first of all, I want to say, your what you're doing and the question that you're asking is exactly the right thing, and exactly the wrong thing that all too many people do is they go, oh yeah, okay, that sounds so beautiful, cool, we're all one, yeah, <laughs> yeah right. And and when and when they're when that it's what my old team, what Maharishi. Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, our, our common teacher, Larry, what he used to refer to as mood making, making a mood of enlightenment. Ooh. Um, and I've hung around places where like everyone talks very softly and we're all, and they all wear the white robes and all that. And they create this, <laughs> right? Uh, and it's just so superficial. Uh, on the other hand, you know, Get, it makes people feel good, gets them through the night, gets them off the street, gets them off of drugs. That's great. That's great. But, we want, but we're not satisfied with that. We want to go deeper. So always do what, exactly what you're doing. Always, if you're, if, if, you know, all, all, always in, in, insist on, on getting this, the straight stuff, getting the experience. But now, when we say, I'm not experiencing it, Okay, I am not experiencing, well, actually three things here. I am not experiencing it, right? There's these three elements in our statement. The usual mistake is that of those three elements, people immediately focus on the third one, the one at the end of the sentence, it. Where's it? Where's it? I'm not experiencing it. Okay. And again, back to Sri Nisargadatta, it's enough that we don't misunderstand. One of the mis one of the deeply, deeply ingrained misunderstandings, because we're so used to experiencing things up here on the wave level, objects, whether they're gross concrete physical objects like microphones and coffee or whether they're subtle objects like thoughts and emotions. We're used to feeling some kind of it, seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, smelling. And so when we start thinking about this thing, we think of it exactly the word you used, as a thing, as one more object, even a very subtle object. And we and that's what we're looking for when we're I'm not experiencing it. We're looking for that we're looking for an it and it's not going to be an it it's going to be the eye that's looking for it 
It tag your it. Okay. So every time, so here's a recommendation. Every time you find yourself in an articulated way as you just did or in a more subtle inner way saying, oh, I'm not experiencing it. In a way, there's a trick there. It's like the 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 devil, Lord Mara, the devil in Buddhism, who is the 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 illusion of ego, right? He's 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 going, yeah, look for it, Larry, look for it, right? And and that's distracting you from no. Go back to the I, that's looking for it. Who or what is this I? Now, when I say who or what is this I, we've already established the intellect not can't answer it. So what do you got? So don't think, look. Don't think, notice. What is this I that allegedly is not experiencing what it needs to experience? What is it? Take a look. Take a look. Don't think. Notice. Everyone. Wave. <laughs> Somebody, say it again, Judy. Oh, I forgot oh. that I was unmuted. <laughs> You're unmuted. Okay. It's, okay. It's 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 the uh, it's the the ocean. I it's, mean, it's it's all of us. It's yeah. Aware. Okay. I don't disagree with you. You know I'm going to agree with you, but uh, right, but are you describing your experience right now or are or is it just is it a very is it a a a really satisfying comforting understanding that somehow somehow intuitively we know that has to be the ultimate answer. Thank God. But right now we're being very um um rigorous. Because because Larry's a scientist and he's and he's making us be rigorous, which is great. We're looking to our actual experience, not just a notion. Even the best, highest, most spiritually correct notion, we're not going to accept a notion of the ocean for for right now. But having an, by the way. Having a notion of the ocean until we get there, that, 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 is, that has its place. It's very important. Keeps us oriented. Keeps us showing up. Keeps us sitting down doing, doing the practice until, you know, more and more than just the mere notion gets, gets replaced by the clear seeing of it. So, so what is this I? Let me ask you this, Larry. Um, And again, these, these, these questions are, are not trick questions. They're not questions to think of. They're not cues to think. They're cues to look, cues to notice. Uh, so when you say I, is this I the, um, uh, uh, the wall across the room from you? Or is it something that can see the wall, something that sees the wall? Sees the wall. It's something that sees the wall. It's not the wall, obviously. OK. Um, Okay, is it the is it the seat that you feel under your butt, or the thing that experiences that the pressure of the seat under your butt? It's the experiencer. The experiencer. Okay, the experiencer. Is it all your al- al- alleged memories of your alleged past? <laughs> right. <laughs> Or, or is it, the, or is it like right now, everyone, you flip through your, your, your mental iPhoto album, right? There it is, birthdays and, and wonderful things, horrible things, right? All flick, 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 right? Is it, the, is it any one of those memories or the collective bunch of those memories? Or is it that which experiences those memories? Experience. Yeah, we know, we know. It's that which experiences the memories. Okay. Is it is it the the clothing that are felt against your body or that which feels the clothing? Okay. Is it the body or that which experiences the body? Don't think. Look. 
Yeah, it's that which experiences the body, isn't it? We can take a time out and think for a moment and remember experiencing a very different body when you were 15 years old or when you were five years old. And yet there's this thread of I, this silent thread of awareness that's experienced all of it. Okay, this is resonating. Okay. Is it, is it any of your thoughts or that which experiences all your thoughts? Can a thought experience anything? Can a, can, a, can, a thought, can a thought experience anything? No. No. A thought is... It, and, and, and some of you are dubious about this, so this is part of your homework. Really look at this one. Whether a thought can experience anything. A thought is... A thought is a blip. A thought is some wave of activity. Can you, ex can you experience a thought? Right now, think, man, what kind of ice cream do I want for dessert tonight? Okay? You're experiencing that thought. That thought can't experience you. Let's be clear. Okay? You're that which experiences all this stuff. Apparently. Okay? Even when we say... Do you experience the body? Even there, I planted a joker in the deck. I, I, I put in an undefined term. I said the body as if we have any idea what we're talking about when we say the body, as if there's a, an experience of the body. Okay? Right now, visualize your body. Where are you seeing it from? The front? The back? The top? The bottom? The outside? The inside? The guts? Does it have clothing? And if so, which clothing? See, what we call our experience, and, and all that so far has just been referring to, to visual experience. Is the visual experience of the body its reality any more than the than the, the, the um, uh, tactile experience of the body, or the auditory, or, or gustatory, or olfactory, <laughs> right? right? So I would submit to you that what we call the body, and what we think because we haven't examined our, our too easily accepted notion of the body, what we call the body, there, there is no one thing. There is no, what we have is this vague, shifting montage or, or collage, collage of impressions, which we va very vaguely connect the dots of that, and we call it the body, and we think we know what we're referring to. Are you hearing that? Is that? And, and that which experiences that collage, that thou art. Okay. I would submit to you, but check it out, check it out. But, but see, the main thing that you're raising here, Larry, which is essentially what you're saying is, you don't want to take my word for it. I'm saying, correct. Don't take my word or the Buddha's word or Jesus's word or anyone's word for any of this stuff. It's way too important. And the Buddha and Jesus or any decent teacher doesn't want you to take their word for it. They want you to check it out. They want you to make it your your your, for lack of a better word, experience, your clear seeing, your clear um, vipassana, your clear seeing. See, and the, because when we look at this stuff rigorously, our notion of what we thought it was, even this simple notion, but I think I, I know the body, that, that's the starting point, it starts to fall apart. <laughs> It starts, to, it starts to deconstruct. But the one thing that doesn't fall apart is this awareness within which the collage and, you know, and the constructing and the deconstructing and all that is taking place. So I have a semantic question. Yes, good. When you're describing, when you use the word I in that sentence, mm -hmm. you know, I see that or I don't experience that. Right. <clears throat> 
you're looking at it from say uh, uh, a deeper level so oftentimes because of western psychology and western psychoanalysis when we say i what we're really talking about is the pummeling we get from our personal thinking that and 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 the <laughs> you know and, and the whole the i like whole... i like this guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, the, pummeling. the pummeling we get from our personal thinking Amen. that's what we usually call the ego right or the i yeah by um, the way by you're... the way the the buddha's word for that pummeling is dukkha <laughs> yeah <laughs> right <laughs> right when the buddha talked about suffering life is suffering he was talking about that pummeling i love that thank you right so so the so what I'm asking is, aren't you talking about an I that is, is not, that's not it. The, the I you're talking about is not the pummeling of my personal thinking. You're talking about... No, it's not the pummeling of the thinking. It's not the thinking. It's not the thinking. It's, it's, it's not the thinker. Is there a thinker? <laughs> well, that... No, no, right? look, look, no, yeah. it's, the, yeah. none of this stuff is hard. None of this stuff is hard. It, it, it seems hard. <laughs> and, then you, and then you see it, you go, how did I miss this? Is there, we assume that there, well, thought is, ta thinking is taking place, therefore there's a thinker. There, there is a proprietor of the thoughts. Similarly, we think, well, actions are taking place. The car is being driven. The groceries are being bought. The teeth are being brushed. Therefore, th there is, uh, the I is, 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 is defined, there's an I that is the, the brusher of the teeth and the driver of the car and so forth. In other words, the, an I which is the author of actions, the doer of actions. Now, just as a little preview of coming attractions, all the texts, all the scriptures tell us whether it's the Bhagavad Gita or the, or the, you know, or the or the, the 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 Buddhist sutras, or if you look closely, the 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 the, the Christian scriptures, the Jewish scriptures. You have to look closer usually for those because it's more poetic and indirect. But where, what they all tell us is, uh, no, sorry, you got confused there. Actually, not sorry. Good news, you got confused there. You are not the author of all these actions. You are the witness of these actions. Because you, because, and we've already seen that, okay, if you're not the body, you're that which is aware of the body. You're not the thoughts, you're that which is aware of the thoughts. You're the witness of this collage of the body. You're the witness of this collage of thoughts. You're the witness of the whole thing. And as that becomes incrementally clearer, you realize, man, oh man, this is the lazy man's paradise. I never do anything, no matter how much I do. What we were looking for all yeah, along, yeah. Here, the reason we want a vacation all the time is because we think we're engaged, we're doing all this stuff. When we find out that where we thought there was a doer, that space, so to speak, is vacant, that's the ultimate, we're on permanent vacation. As Alice Cooper said, school's out forever. Sri Guru Alice Cooper. Sri Guru Ji Alice Cooper. Uh, yeah, Dine, you want to jump in here? Yeah, it, it, I was going to say, it just reminds me of... Um, Fake it till you make it. I feel like you have to just pretend that you are the God and um, that you're jumping into different roles. Um, and I feel like after a while, um, I don't know, I feel like it just kind of takes over. Yeah, I mean, it sounds to me like what, what you're saying is not that we have to pretend to be the God, it's we're pretending to be humans. <laughs> you know, we jump into this role. I pretend it. And, and, and the thing is, we don't have to work hard at that because we've been, been practicing it all our life or probably, you know, innumerable lifetimes, practicing being the, 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 the driver. And then, and then it's somehow, you know, we, we go into, 
our so-called meditation, all that gets a little bit loosened. We come back, all it gets kind of loosened up, loosened up. And as my teacher Marishi described it once, it's like we're pushing our little red wagon, we're pushing our little red wagon, we're pushing our little red wagon. One day you give it one last push, and it just kind of rolls along on its own. So that whole little red wagon of living our life, we're raising our kids, we're doing the job, we're, 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 we're having these conversations, we're doing all this stuff. And um, ah, then it just kind of goes on and we're, we're, we're delightfully the, the witness of it. You know, as Walt Whitman put it, I'm, I'm not contained between my, my hat and my boots. One of these days in our Sunday poetry sessions, we're going to get to Whitman, Leaves of Grass, where he, he expresses all this very beautifully. Larry, let me, let, me, let me add. Is Larry still here? Did he have to go? Uh, yeah, East Coast. Okay, never mind. Um, whoa. <laughs> okay. Wow. I think I have a telephone call. <laughs> oh, there you go. Um, okay. We're, we're about out of time. Any more, any more burning uh, points or questions here before? Yes, uh, 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 Lynn, you want to unmute yourself, please? Um, I know I haven't studied any of this. It's all very new to me, and mm -hmm. you don't have to respond to this. I like I like the fact that uh, the awareness thing and um, and it just seems to me that 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 part of this is just letting go. Yeah, That's all of it. My, all of my perspective is it's yes. a letting go situation. All of it is all of it is just letting go. Okay. All of it. Yeah, ab absolutely right. That's okay. you know bottom line, pff, let it go. But yeah. but but. Um, any language that we use always has a back door of possible misinterpretation. Even a simple expression like let it go. And I know for you that's that works. You know what that means. But I just but but I mean I've spent so many years trying to find the perfect bulletproof language for this stuff that no one can possibly misunderstand. Yeah. But there's always possible back door. So so let me just throw in a little caution on this phrase, let it go, because we do hear this so much. A lot of people, and some of you have heard me say this before, a lot of people, when they hear let it go, they hear that word go, and they think that means, even without thinking it through, they think it means let it go, they think it means it's supposed to go away. No. No. So you understand that. But... But I used to say let it go a lot. I don't use it much anymore because then people would say, well, I'm trying to let it go, but I can't. And that means they're, exp they're requiring it, whatever it is, to go away. Right? So, so I finally, after years, stopped saying let it go and just started right. saying relax yes. your grip. Yes. Relax your grip. And then whether or not it goes away or when it goes away, that's how to, you've let that go. <laughs> you've let that issue go so to me it's a subtle thing and I even on uh, with someone on, on Tuesday Yehudit it was you it was you that, that, that we were talking about this and then you kept saying uh, and I kept saying yes relax your grip and, and you kept and you, and, and you came away with it very happy saying good just loosen your grip and later on, I wanted to mention this to you because later on I said, I don't even like that word. Even to say, to say loose, and again, that works for you, but if I say loosen your grip, some people are going to think, oh, my, that's, even that is still like looking at the relationship between this and this. There's still, whereas, so someone could say, I can't loosen my grip. Can you relax your grip? Yeah. We can always relax our grip. You see, what I, I mean, I'm just, I'm just really, really. There's, there's no word you would like. If there's no, there's no word that 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 would suffice. Oh yeah, ultimately all the words are are wrong. But as T. S. Eliot said, 
I got to use words when I talk to you. <laughs> okay. So, and as the, as the Zen masters point out, all the words are, they're not the moon, they're merely the fingers pointing at the moon. And then as we get clearer and clearer on the experience of the moon, of the, the thing, then we go, oh, that's what these fingers were pointing to. And by the way, because different people are pointing from different locations, right? Someone over here, let's say, in, you know, some pointing at, from a, a context of a Christian culture and someone over here from a Hindu culture, Buddhist culture, it looks like they're, they're arguing. They're pointing in different directions. And people who don't have clear experience of the moon, which is most people, are going to say, oh, this one's right, this one, you know, they're going, these people are arguing, hmm, which one's right, which one's wrong. Once you get the experience of the moon clearly, all that argumentation falls apart. You know, and that goes back to my fantasy that somewhere there's a bar in heaven where <laughs> Buddha and Jesus and Confucius and Lao Tzu and Shankara, the Baal Shem Tov, and they're, they're, all, they're all slapping each other on the back, tell, taking, telling jokes and, you know, taking turns paying for the next round, while outside all their followers argue. Okay. So. Thank you. Thank you. So may all beings swiftly get over <laughs> this stupid <laughs> argument. May all beings swiftly realize that moon, realize the simplicity of, of what we truly are, the simplicity, the, the, um, the all perfection of it, the, the awe of it, and thus may all conflict spontaneously evaporate. Loka samasta suki no bhavantu. Loka samasta suki no bhavantu. Loka samasta suki no bhavantu. Oh, shanti, shanti, shanti. Thank you all so much for your beautiful presence, your beautiful participation, your beautiful being. Thank you. See ya. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Being. Bye. 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 Bye.